Hi everybody, I'm Scott Stewart with the University of Tennessee and I want to talk today a little bit about scouting grain sorghum. It's become kind of the latest crop that we seem to be, be interested in and insect pests can be a pretty significant threat to grain sorghum. A lot of people grow grain sorghum because they think it's a low management crop and there are some things about it that are low management, but insect pests, particularly in late planted milo, uh, do need to be scouted and treated for as needed. A general recommendation for insect management in grain sorghum is to plant your sorghum as early as practical within the recommended planting window. This helps you avoid a lot of the late season insect pests which are more common on late planted grain sorghum. Uh, this would include things like sorghum midge, the headworm complex such as fall armyworm, corn earworm or sorghum webworm and also sugarcane aphid. After planting milo, you really should try to scout the field at least week weekly and, and look on seedling milo for occurrence of occasional pests like cutworm and green bug. But the reality is that most of the insect pests that seriously affect milo on a consistent basis begin about the time the plant starts heading. And again, this includes things like the headworms, sugarcane aphid, and sorghum midge. World feeding caterpillars are often the first insects that I get phone calls about in the season. Like the name implies, this is caterpillars that feed down in the whorls of the plants. It's almost always going to be fall armyworm, especially in late planted milo. Occasionally, it'll be corn earworm also. What they do is they feed on the plants, cause irregular shaped holes on the leaves. The small larvae will actually cause window pane like lesions. Uh, we're normally not very concerned about infestations of fall armyworm or corn earworm in the whorls unless they're unusually high populations on small plants, plants say less than 12 inches tall. In that case, they can sometimes cause yield loss and will recommend treatment. Uh, the treatment threshold is when 75 to 100 percent of the plants are infested. It's not uncommon to see that many plants with feeding injury, but it's pretty uncommon to find 75 or 100 larvae on, on 100 plants, so treatment doesn't happen very often. I do want to take a break and talk a little bit about sorghum growth and development because I'm going to throw some terminology at you that I want everybody to be familiar with. The first thing I want to talk about is the flag leaf. The flag leaf is the leaf immediately below the head and that's the leaf you're, you're seeing here. It'll be important when I talk in a minute about scouting sugarcane aphid. Second thing I'll point out is this is the head of the sorghum plant. It flowers and in fact it flowers from the top down on the plant. After it flowers it begins filling grain. So just so everybody's familiar with the terminology, flag leaf and, and the head. So when we talk about headworms, that implies we're talking about caterpillars feeding in the head. I want to talk about a new pest that we're dealing with the last couple of years in Tennessee, and I, I think this is one that's going to stick with us for a while, and that's the sugarcane aphid. This pest has really never been recorded and reported as a, a pest on sorghum in the past, but it's an invasive insect that's apparently made the switch to sorghum, and it's, bun it's become a pretty substantial problem. Uh, these aphids are found on the undersides of leaves, or at least most of them are found on the undersides of leaves, often in very, very large numbers. In Tennessee, the sugarcane cane aphid tends to show up uh, about mid-season or a little bit later and, be, and because of that it's a more serious problem on late planted milo. Uh, when you're scouting for these things a couple of things you want to do is you want to keep track of the number of plants you're finding in the field that are infested and then you also want to make a count so you can determine the average number of aphids on the flag leaf. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind while you're, you're scouting this pest is they're very edge oriented when they first infest the field. They'll be on the edges or maybe in the middle of the field where there's uh, a blank spot or something like that. And in fact, when scouting for sugarcane aphid, I would tell you if you can't find them along the field edges, you don't have a problem. They're not in the field yet and there's really not much point in going out further into the field. So there's several kinds of aphids that can occur in, in sorghum. We're talking a lot about the sugarcane aphid because that's one that's commonly become an economic pest. But it is important to recognize there's three or four other species and you need to learn how to dis distinguish those species. Uh, one thing about the sugarcane aphid is it tends to be light in color and yellow in color and it also it tends to occur in large clusters, sometimes several hundred or several thousand aphids on a leaf. The other aphids we're dealing with include the 
corn leaf aphid. It's a green colored aphid that tends to occur in the whorls of plants. It's really not much of an economic threat at all. And there's two other species that tend to be a problem on seedling plants. One is the green bug, which as the name implies is a green colored aphid. And the other is a little confusing because the name of it is the yellow sugarcane aphid. It's also yellow in color, but it's bright yellow in color. And it typically doesn't occur in great big colonies. Both those aphids can be a significant threat on seedling plants, and they're found often on those very lower leaves on seedling plants, but it's pretty uncommon for them to be a pest in Milo once you get to the heading stage or after. The next pest I want to talk about is, is a famous pest on sorghum, and that's the sorghum midge. The sorghum midge is a fly, and the fly does not cause any damage. It's the larvae that feed on the seed. But really, you have to control the fly because the larvae are hidden behind the awns of the seed and really protected from insecticides. Now, this is a tiny little gnat. It's a tiny orange thing, and it only attacks the sorghum plant or the head while it's blooming. So really, you're only going to sample for this insect during the blooming period, and you're going to really specifically target the part of the head that's blooming. And if you remember, I said that sorghum tends to bloom from the, well, it doesn't tend to, it does bloom from the top down. So different parts of the head will bloom at different times. Uh, what we're looking for is this tiny orange fly. There's several different sampling methods, uh, and we're trying to determine when we take our samples how many flies are out there per head, because our threshold is one fly per head. And again, tiny orange flies. Takes a little training to learn how big they are and what to look for. The three common sampling techniques are, are pretty simple. One is you just visually look. And that's the one I usually employ the most. I go around the field and I look at the blooming heads and I try to spot, spot the orange flies. And really when I'm doing that, it's more of a presence and absence sample because in the vast majority of the cases, sorghum midge are not common. In fact, they're usually very difficult to find. Where you usually find a lot of sorghum midge tends to be on later planted milo, especially if there's some early planted milo nearby. The se second sampling technique, the one that's kind of recommended for determining whether you're at threshold or not, is called the bag technique. And it's a very simple technique where you take a clear bag, uh, sneak it down over the head in multiple places in the field. You give the shake, the head a little bit of a shake, and you actually count, count the flies that fly off and land on the edges of that clear plastic sack. The third technique is kind of a, a cheesy technique, and again, it's really uh, a confidence builder to determine presence and absence of midge, and it's what I call the clap technique or the slap technique, and, and it's just like it sounds. You actually walk up to the head, you look at the part of the head that's blooming, and you clap your hands. And when you do that, you crush midge, and they leave a characteristic orange spot on your hand. I've shown this to a lot of consultants, and they like it because it's kind of a quick and easy way for them to make sure they're not missing anything. They can go up and slap susceptible heads, and if they never pick up an orange spot, it gives them a lot of confidence. On the other hand, if they start picking up a lot of orange spots, they know to look closer or that they already have a problem. Just another comment about sorghum midge. Again, remember they're only laying their eggs during the flowering period. When you're sampling for midge, my normal suggestion is to start when 20 to 30 percent of the heads in the field are blooming, and normally you can quit by the time most of the heads in the field are blooming if you're not finding a lot of midge. In other words, if most of the heads are flowering and you're having a hard time fi finding sorghum midge at the threshold levels or anywhere close to threshold levels of one per head, normally the populations aren't going to get bad enough in the next week or so that you really need to come back and worry about scouting for midge. At that time, you really need to switch your emphasis and start scouting for the headworm complex, which is the next thing I want to talk about. So the headworms are a very common group or complex of pests that infest Milo in Tennessee and elsewhere where sorghum is grown. And again, the headworm complex, like many other pests, tends to be much more common and worse in late planted Milo. When I say headworms, that's just kind of a, a layperson way of grouping a, several different species together. And we are talking about either the corn earworm, fall armyworm, and sorghum webworm. Uh, these larvae feed on the grain of the heads. They don't all feed necessarily the same. Corn earworm and fall armyworm uh, do similar amount of damage per larvae. The sorghum webworm is quite a bit smaller. It doesn't get very large. It's covered with fine hairs, and it does less feeding, so it takes more sorghum webworm to cause the same amount of damage as a corn earworm or a fall armyworm.
When sampling for headworms, really the time period you're looking at is from early bloom up through the blooming period, plus about another seven or 10 days. So there's really about a two or three week critical window. The moths typically come into the field and begin laying eggs about the times the hedge, heads emerge and are blooming, and then the larvae develop over the next two or three weeks. Once the uh, blooming period's done, the egg lay typically subsides and, and you don't have near as much problem. The most common sampling methods are to take something like a sweep net or a bucket and actually in random spots in the field check 10 consecutive heads by shaking those heads into the sweep net or into the bucket. And then you have to carefully pick through the, the bottom of the net or the bucket and the debris looking for small and large larvae. What you're trying to do is, of course, quantify how many larvae there are per head because our thresholds are based on the number of larvae per head. And so you're going to count the number of larvae and the kinds of larvae that are in that net. So if you're sampling 10 heads at one location, typically I'd recommend that you sample at four different spots to get a minimum of 40 heads per field. You don't always have to do that. Sometimes you sample 20 heads and you're five times threshold. Sometimes you sample 20 heads and you haven't found a caterpillar and that lets you know you're well below threshold. So you can adjust your sampling intensity based on what you're finding. Now we'll take a look at the threshold recommendations for these various pests. And you need to keep in mind that this may vary by region or even within a state from year to year as we get more information. We recommend treatment for the sorghum midge when we average one fly or more per head. For world feeding caterpillars like the fall armyworm or corn earworm, we recommend treatment when 75 to 100 percent of the plants are infested with larvae. For corn earworm or fall armyworm, the treatment threshold is one larvae per head. For sorghum webworm, the treatment threshold is three to four larvae per head. Our thresholds for sugarcane aphid are being developed and and formalized now as we get more and more information about this new pest. Right now our current recommendation is to treat for sugarcane aphid when 30 percent, 40 percent or more of the plants in the field have aphids present and you have these localized hot spots of aphids and honeydew occurring in the is scattered throughout the field. An alternative threshold is when you have an average of 50 aphids per flag leaf. 